fathers glory and praise forevermore blessed your great and glorious holy name glory and praise forevermore bring out your joy give glory to god lift up your hearts and sing In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear sisters and brothers, the theme for today's Novena Mass is Christ Strengthening Marital Commitment. And so today in this Novena Mass, we specially remember all the married couples. We pray for them so that the Lord may always journey with them in their life of married couple, in their lives as married couples and also in their family. We pray that the Lord may be with them specially in their difficulties and trials and that they may always find strength and courage to bear their own crosses by uniting themselves to the cross of Christ. We also remember many single parents whose husbands or wives are no more. We pray for them that the Lord may grant them all the strength they need to bring up their family in values, imbued with the values of Christ. Today the church also celebrates on 25th July the feast of St. James, the Apostle and the Martyr. We know St. James was very close to Jesus and he had a very rare so to say opportunity to be with Jesus in three significant moments first he was one with Peter and John at the time of transfiguration he was also present when the daughter of Jairus was being raised from dead to life and he was also present when Jesus went through his agony at Gethsemane. The tradition also teaches us that Saint James was the first among the apostles to be martyred. Today as we celebrate his feast we also pray through his intercession that Saint James through, may intercede for us and grant us the courage to bear witness to our Christian faith especially in moment of our trials and temptations and to prepare ourselves to worthily participate in the sacred mysteries of the Lord let us acknowledge our failings our frailties and ask for his pardon and forgiveness as we together say I confess, I confess to Almighty God, God and, and to you my, my brothers, brothers and, and sisters, sisters that, that I have greatly, greatly sinned, sinned in my thoughts and, and in, in my words in, in what, what I have done and, and what, in what I have, I have failed, failed to do, do. through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy on us all. Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. 
Let us together glorify the Lord as we say, Glory, Glory to God, God in, in the highest, and, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who consecrated the first fruits of your apostle by the blood of Saint James, grant, we pray, that your church may be strengthened by his confession of faith and constantly sustained by his protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. We have this treasure in earthen vessels to show that the transcendent power belongs to God and not to us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. For while we live, we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. Since we have the same spirit of faith as he had who wrote, I believed and so I spoke. We too believe and so we speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. The word of the Lord. Let our response be. Those who are sowing in tears will sing when they reap. Let us repeat. Those, Those who, who are, are sowing, sowing in tears will, will sing when, when they reap. When the Lord delivered Zion from bondage, it seemed like a dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter. On our lips there were songs. Response. Those, Those who, who are sowing in tears will sing when, when they reap. The heathens themselves said, what marvels the Lord worked for them! What marvels the Lord worked for us! Indeed, we were glad. Response? Those, Those who, who are, are sowing in tears will, will sing when, when they, they reap. Deliver us, O Lord, from our bondage as streams in dry land. Those who are sowing in tears will sing when they reap. Response? Those, Those who, who are sowing in tears will sing when they reap. They go out, they go out full of tears, carrying seed for the sowing. They come back, they come back full of song, carrying their sheaves. Response? Those, Those who, who are, are sowing, sowing in tears will sing when they reap. Let us all rise for the acclamation. <coughs> Glorify the Lord, glorify the Lord.
From the Holy Gospel according to Saint Matthew. Glory be to you, o Lord. The mother of the sons of Zebedee came up to Jesus with her sons, and kneeling before him, she asked him for something. And he said to him, What do you want? She said to him, Command that these two sons of mine may sit, one at your right hand and one at your left in your kingdom. But Jesus answered, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I am to drink? They said to him, We are able. He said to them, you will drink my cup indeed, but to sit at my right hand and at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared by my father. And when the ten heard this, they were indignant at the two brothers. But Jesus called them to him and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great men exercise authority over them. It shall not be so with you, but whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be your slave. Even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to Lord Jesus Christ. My dear sisters and brothers, do you know there is a little unknown town in Croatia named Shiroki Brieg that has a population of over 30,000 people. But till date, in the collective memory of the people of this town, there has never been a single divorce or divorce being recorded. Not one single family has broken up. And the reason behind that is that they have learned to place Christ and his cross at the center of their marriage and their family life. And this attitude of placing Christ at the center of their married life finds a physical expression in the customs and traditions that these people have been following down the centuries. One of their customs that is done or followed on the wedding day is that the bridal couple enter the church carrying a crucifix. The priest blesses the crucifix brought by the bride and groom. Then at the time of the exchange of vows, the priest places the bride's right hand upon the crucifix and that of the groom upon hers. 
and covers both their hands with his stole. The couple then mix their vows with their hands tightly clasping the crucifix. The priest then tells them that they have found an ideal partner with whom they must share their lives in the following words. The priest says, you have found your cross. It is a cross that you must love and take with you every day of your lives. Know your cross well. Cherish and appreciate it. Later, at the time of kissing each other, the priest says to them, you may now kiss the cross. They do it devoutly, and then they take the cross to their home and enthrone it in a place of honor in their home, showing their profound belief that a family must be born of the cross. This cross then becomes to them a reference point of their lives and a place for their family prayer. In times of difficulty and misunderstanding, as all human relationships experience at some point of time or the other, these couples do not turn to a lawyer or a psychologist or even to an astrologer. They turn to to that cross. That cross becomes for them at that moment the symbol of a living presence of Jesus in their midst. That cross for them becomes the blessed sacrament in their home. The spouses kneel before the cross, cross and with an unwavering faith ask for strength to endure their trials. This attitude of consistent with the belief, this attitude is consistent with the belief that cross would give them the strength to overcome their daily trials if they ground their marriage in it. And this is very important. The couple firmly believe that if any of them abandons the other, they will abandon Christ. My dear sisters and brothers, does this Croatian custom at wedding seem to you just a morbid outlook on marital and family life? Or does it seem to you a piece of wisdom that few of our modern world can understand? I believe that seeing their marriage as a cross permanently united to the cross of Christ is a profound wisdom that sets this little town of Shiroki Brieg apart. The reason why they have not seen a single divorce to this day. Yes, my dear sisters and brothers, especially my beloved couples, in a marriage, one cannot rely on one's own strength. Whatever you have or bring to the table, it will never be enough. But when you surrender what you have to Jesus, he will transform it into more than enough. You remember the little boy in the Bible who surrendered five loaves and two fish? Jesus transformed it into more than enough. Twelve baskets of extra was being collected. And the wedding at Cana, when the bridal couple ran short of wine, the water that Jesus transformed into wine that day, biblical scholars say, would be enough, even if the wedding had to last for a week. My dear sisters and brothers, what is important in both these biblical stories and what is important for our marital commitment and a marriage life and a family life to be devout and faithful is our willingness to surrender. 
If you remember the story of Cana, in a way, Mary asks Jesus nothing in concrete. She makes no exact request to Jesus. All that she tells Jesus is the situation that the bridal couple is in, namely that they're running short of wine. And then she surrenders herself to Jesus, knowing that when Jesus is there, they will find the solution to the problem. Knowing that when Jesus is around, he will provide. Truly, my dear sisters and brothers, when we surrendered ourselves to him, he will provide our needs. The first reading of today expresses a similar thought. St. Paul assures us that because of the presence of Jesus, no amount of trials will be able to discourage us. No amount of unanswered questions will be able to set despair in us. And even if we are persecuted or knocked down, we will never be abandoned or crushed. My dear sisters and brothers, this has been the experience of many, like St. James, whose feast the church celebrates today. We heard in the gospel how his mother brings him together with his brother and says to Jesus, place my sons at the right and the left, crown them. And then Jesus reminds her that without cross, there is no crown. And the tradition tells us that St. James was the first martyr among the apostles. My dear sisters and brothers, sadly today, we hear more of marriages on the rocks than sailing smoothly. We hear more of crisis couples than couples that are happy. We hear more of broken families than the families that are strengthened by strong family bonds. And you know the reason behind this? There is no Christ presence in their families. Bishop Fulton Shin once wrote a book on marriage and he titled it as It Takes Three to Get Married. No price for guessing. The third obviously is Christ. Sisters and brothers, Christ has the power to strengthen our marital commitment. Christ can resolve all our marital issues. But we visit lawyers and psychologists more than falling on our knees and praying to him who has the power to strengthen us to face all trials and difficulties in our married life. I'm sure you all know the famous adage that says, the family that prays together stays together. So now you know why the families fall apart? There is no prayer. Families have time for everything. They have time for entertainment. They have time for parties. They have time for movies. Except for time to gather the family together and say the family prayer. My dear sisters and brothers, if you don't have your family bonds rooted in Christ, then where will you derive the sap to survive? Sisters and brothers, especially the married couples, without doubt, you will be faced with a lot of unanticipated and unimagined challenges of your marital life and family living. But like the little boy and the Mary of the biblical stories I related, and the people of little town of Shiroki Brieg, if you surrender, embrace, clasp, kiss the cross, you will have nothing to fear. When you totally surrender yourself to him, he will give you more than what you expect, more than what you need. He will receive a wellspring of grace, no matter how hard, how difficult the situation in your marital life be. If you allow Christ to journey in your marital life, in your highest peaks and the lowest valleys, 
you will always find him by your side, strengthening you in your marital commitment to kiss your daily crosses and to find meaning, fulfillment and happiness in your married life. Ignatius, whose novenas we are in these days, in his entire life, he exemplified what it means to dispose oneself or to surrender oneself to Jesus, which is beautifully expressed in his prayer, take and receive. My dear sisters and brothers, may we always cry out in the words of Ignatius, Lord, take and receive, all is yours. Amen. We now place before the Lord a few of our prayers and intentions, specially praying for married couples and the families. Let your response be, Saint Ignatius, pray for us. Saint Ignatius, pray, pray for, for us. us. Marriage <coughs> is a symbol of Christ's love for his church. Rooted in the sacrificial love of Christ, it supports and inspires sincere relationships in the world. It is a sacrament and vocation that amidst innumerable trials and temptations remains a victorious sign to the joy of the families. Let us pray for them through the intercession of St. Ignatius of Loyola. Your response? St. Ignatius, Ignatius, pray, pray, pray for, for us. us. That through the sacrament of reconciliation, the couples may nourish and strengthen their love for each other and that their acts of forgiveness for each other may strengthen their marital commitment to be an exemplary couple of the family of St. Joseph, Mary and Jesus. Let us pray through the intercession of St. Ignatius of Loyola. Your response? St. Ignatius, pray, pray, for, pray us. for us. Every couple is a cell of a domestic church, aware of their unique status through their word and example, they may lead each other and their family to God. May their generosity to the poor and needy, may draw God's infinite mercy and blessings on their couple love. Let us pray through the intercession of St. Ignatius of Loyola. St. Ignatius, pray, pray for us. us. Almighty God, through the intercession of St. Ignatius of Loyola, we have placed at your feet few of our prayers and intentions. We especially prayed for the married couples and their families. Walk with them, Lord, in their journey of peaks, highest peaks and the lowest valleys. Grant them your grace and strength, especially in moments of their trials and difficulties and help them to find joy, happiness and fulfillment in their married life. We make this prayer in the name of your son, Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
my dear sisters and brothers, that mine and your sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May it be acceptable. May it be acceptable. May it be acceptable. May it be acceptable. Cleanse us by the saving baptism of your son's passion, so that on the feast of St. James, whom you willed to be the first among the apostles to drink of Christ's chalice of suffering, we may offer a sacrifice pleasing to you, to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit lift up your hearts we lift them up to the lord let us give thanks to the lord our god it, it is right and, and just. just it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god for you eternal shepherd do not desert your flock but through the blessed apostles watch over it and protect it always so that it may be governed by those who have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of your son. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Philip Neri, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all, we pray. We especially remember all the married couples and their families. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with the Blessed Apostles, Saint James, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may co merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us call God our Father in the words that Jesus himself has taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will, will be done. done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. For Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, and today you say to each one of us, Peace I give you, my peace I leave you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of Christ always remain with you and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other a meaningful sign of peace. Peace, 
This is the Lamb of God. This is Jesus who has the power to strengthen our marital commitment. If we surrender to him our own crosses and derive strength from his cross, uniting our crosses to his, he will strengthen us to carry our crosses. This Jesus is now coming into our hearts to strengthen our faith in him. Happy are all of us who are called to partake in his holy meal. Lord, Lord I am not, not worthy, worthy that, that you should, should enter under, under my roof, roof but, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Since we cannot receive Jesus at this moment sacramentally, let us make an act of spiritual communion and experience the presence of Jesus who is in us, who dwells in our hearts, who abides in us. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. pray. O Lord, we pray, help us through the intercession of blessed Apostle James, on whose feast day we have received with joy your holy gifts 
to Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you and Amen. with your spirit. Bow your heads for solemn blessings. May God who has granted you to stand firm on apostolic foundations graciously bless you through the glorious merits of holy apostle Saint James. Amen. Amen. And may he who endowed you with the teaching and example of the apostles make you under their protection witnesses to the truth before all. Amen. Amen. So that through the intercession of apostles, Saint James, particularly on his feast day, you may inherit the eternal homeland for by their teaching you possess firmness of faith. Amen. Amen. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Novena Prayer in honor of St. Ignatius of Loyola. Loving God, <clears throat> in these difficult times of the coronavirus, we know that you walk with us and strengthen us for the journey ahead of us. During this Novena in memory of St. Ignatius of Loyola, we ask you to make our hearts like the heart of your son, Jesus. Give us your Holy Spirit so that we bring hope to those who are struggling, anxious, afraid or apprehensive. We place ourselves in your hands, O Lord, with our joys and our hopes our works and our sufferings, all that we are and all that we do. Today we specially ask you to bless the married couples. We also pray for our own personal intentions. Bless us, O gracious Lord, and help us to strive for love that is shown in service. May we work to build up one human family, family for your greater glory. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us, Give us today this day our, our daily bread. bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.